Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Now we meet again. Uh, so this is the continuation of the AC motor. So uh, for this slide, uh, we are will be uh, discussing or um, looking at the equivalent circuit model of the AC uh, three-phase AC induction motor. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the circuit here, so we have a stator, okay, and we have a rotor, and uh, where the, there is no connection, there is no electrical connection between the stator and the rotor, uh, where this is a, this both circuits are actually um, separated by an air gap, but uh, these two circuits are linked by the magnetic uh, field. Okay, so in steady state, the produced magnetic field uh, rotate at the synchronous speed, meaning that this magnetic field is actually rotating what we call the RMF with the speed of synchronous speed, which is you can calculate by using uh, NS is equal to 120 multiplied with the frequency supply over the number of pole. Okay. So due to the air gap field here, okay, uh, it will induce voltage in uh, both uh, stator and also rotor winding. So the frequency, so uh, we have um, AC circuit at the stator and also AC circuit at the rotor. So for the stator, the circuit is operated with the frequency supply while the rotor is operated um, with frequency F2 or we call this as a slip frequency. Okay, so actually, um, the operation of this um, this induction motor is actually similar to the transformer. The difference is that uh, there is a rotation inside the at the secondary part. Okay, so um, in order to study the performance, or you can uh, predict the performance of this uh, induction machine or induction motor. It is good to um, to actually uh, come out with an equivalent model of this induction motor. So um, since it, the operation is similar to the transformer, okay. So actually, the model of the induction motor also can be uh, look at the what we call the primary part, and then we have another one which is at the secondary part, which is the rotor. Okay, so this is the circuit equivalent uh, at the stator part. Okay, so we have the voltage input here, and then we have uh, the winding resistance due to the stator winding, and then we have the leakage inductance of the winding, and then uh, we have a copper loss that represent by the RC and the magnetizing inductance. So this magnetizing inductance is used uh, to first to magnetize um, the stator to be a magnet. Okay, so it is required here. And then E1 is the voltage induced at the, um, at the stator. Okay, so actually as you can see, the equivalent circuit is similar to the transformer primary side. But uh, the difference is that um, for the transformer, the current that goes into the magnetizing uh, Inductance here is uh, very small, which is one to five percent. But for the motor, the current I M, which is go into this X M, is actually very large, Com is which is uh, twenty to fifty percent of the stator current. Okay, and um, X one is also very large than in transformer. Okay, so X one in this mo AC motor is. Uh, very very large compared to the one use uh, model in a transformer and then this is the rotor part or the secondary part okay so uh, this is the equivalent per phase uh, quantities so e2 is the induced voltage at standstill meaning that the frequency is f right now the frequency of the rotor is equal to f1 okay 
and then we have the winding resistance R2 here and then also a leakage inductance. Okay, and the frequency, uh, this circuit has a frequency which is uh, F2 and it is um, depend on the slip. Okay, so when it is a standstill, so F1, F2 is equal to F1. Okay, and from this, we can um, derive the equation of the current, which is uh, the current of the rotor is equivalent to S uh, E2 over R2 plus J S X2. And this is P2, which is uh, the power loss due to inside the rotor circuit. So this one we call uh, uh, power loss uh, in the rotor. Okay. So it is e I square multiplied with the R2. So this is uh, the general uh, voltage equation. This is referred to the stator. So we have the voltage supply and then we have uh, uh, voltage drop across the R resistor and then we have the leakage inductance and plus the uh, voltage EMF but right now this voltage is the what we call the voltage uh, at, uh, for the air gap okay which is E1 and this is equivalent to K multiplied with the frequency multiplied with the flux at the air gap and this is the rotor voltage equation. <coughs> okay, E2 is the voltage induced during standstill. Okay, R2, I2 is the voltage drop at the rotor circuit. And then we have the leakage inductance. So, and E2 here, as you can see, is um, equivalent, is equals to K multiplied with F2 multiplied with the flux at the air gap. And as you know that F2 is can be is actually related to SF1. So so E2 is actually uh, depend on the value of the slip. So um, previously the current equation is I, I2 is equal to S. E2 over R2 plus J S X2. Okay, so when we factor out S here, which is I2 is equivalent to S E, we factor out S here, so this one will become R2 over S plus J X2, right? So we can cancel out. So we can also write down this equation to this equation. Okay, we factor out the S. So right now, uh, as you can see, this circuit, this is the original circuit. So when we use, when we actually factor out the S here, uh, you can actually uh, write down the circuit as this one. So E2 and then X2 and right now you have R2 V over S. Okay. And for simplification in terms of calculating the output power, okay, we actually divide uh, this R2 over S into two components because uh, this one we relate to the P rotor losses, okay, which is uh, I square R2 while this one which is I square R2 over S 1 minus S is actually a P output of mechanical okay so that's why we divide this one okay actually this one is actually if you sum up together you will have the same R2 over S but for power calculation uh, we want to Know that I want to, to let you know that um, for this R2, it contribute to uh, rotor losses and also part of the R2 also will contribute to the output power. Okay. 
So, uh, based on this stator equivalent circuit and also rotor equivalent circuit, we know that uh, for frequency uh, for the stator, it is operated at F1 while rotor is operated at F2. Okay, and um, we can actually um, simplify the circuit, okay, simplify the circuit and refer the proto side into a stator side. So it's actually equals to what we have done um, to the transformer circuit, okay. So this is the um, quantities of the roto side when we refer to the stator side. So as you can see here, the equivalent reactance is A square X2, okay? And also for R2 is actually A square R2. And for the current is I2 over A, while for the voltage induced is A over E A multiplied with E2 and A is actually N1 over N2. Okay. So, however, this circuit is not very convenient to use in uh, our analysis of the performance. Okay. So, air gap power cross the air gap. So, meaning that. Uh, from here, okay, so from here, transfer to this rotor we call is a power air gap, meaning that this power air gap is the P input uh, for the rotor. Okay, this can be calculated based on this equation. Okay, so this is power air gap and we know that uh, R2 over S is actually have two components, which is um, this one is for the P for the rotor losses and the other one is actually for uh, the output mechanical. Okay, so we have uh, P rotor losses and P mechanical. Okay. So, and from here, okay, the power air gap, uh, so it's actually PAG is equals to P roto losses over S. So, meaning that P roto losses is equals to S multiplied with P A gap. So, to calculate P roto losses, what you need to do is just multiply uh, the power of the input, which is the PA gap, multiply with the slip. So let's do some example. So uh, three phase 15 horsepower, 460 volts. So this one is the B line, four pole, 60 hertz, 1728 RPM induction motor. So delivers output, full output power to a load connected to each shaft. The winding, the windage and friction loss of motor is 750 watt. So determine the mechanical power. Okay. So the first information is that it deliver full output power, meaning that it deliver 15 horsepower. So one horsepower is equivalent to 746 watt. So meaning that the P out is actually 15 multiplied 746. So this one is around one, one, 11 point one nine kilo watt, but you, the power developed by the motor is actually P out plus the P uh, mechanical losses. Okay. So one, 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 uh, 11 point one nine zero K plus 750, you will obtain one 11.94 kilowatt. So this is the uh, mechanical output power of before the losses. 
okay, before the windage and friction losses. Okay, and the power air gap, okay, we know that this one is, okay, we can use the P uh, develop is equal to um, 1 over S P air gap, okay. So S right now, you can compute by using NS minus NM over NS. So my NS here is uh, 120 multiplied with the frequency supply 60 over pole, which is you can obtain this one is 120 multiplied 60 over 4. So 1800. And the motor speed is 1728. So from here, you can get 17 over 1800, which is 0 0.04. So this is the slip. Okay, one zero point zero four. So from here, you can get uh, 1 minus 0 0.04. Okay. multiply with the so from here you can get your PA gap is equals to uh, P developed mechanical which is 11.94 kilowatt over uh, 0 0.96 so you will get 11.94 um, kilowatt over 0 0.96 so 12.4 37.5 okay so 12437.5 watt so that is your PA gap and for the copper losses the copper losses which is rotor losses is actually equal to S multiplied with the power air gap so this one um, is 0 0.04 multiply with the air gap 12.437 kilowatt so you will obtain 497.5 okay okay so uh, as mentioned before this circuit is not appropriate to be used to predict or to do to use it as a analysis or simulation model so what we do is actually we can approximate that equivalent circuit so by considering that r1 and x1 uh, voltage drop is very minimum so we can transfer the state finding r1 and x1 to the uh, this one okay like this okay and then we consider that RC is also very small compared to XM. So this is actually the uh, equivalent circuit. So this can be considered as a rot stator side and uh, this is actually the, the rotor side. Okay, but this is uh, actually this circuit is not recommended by the IEEE because uh, IEEE is actually for you information is the very big uh, society that uh, involve a lot of uh, um, producing the standards of the electrical uh, system in the world. So IEEE recommend uh, this type of circuit okay, uh, for, analyse, uh, for, analyse, for analysis of the induction motor. So this is the recommended equivalent circuit. Okay, As you can see, we have R1, X1 before the XM. Okay, So XM here will uh, is actually represent uh, uh, the, the the division the, the we divide between the stator and also the rotor side. Okay, and usually for simplification purpose, okay. So what we do is actually because uh, this circuit is very it's not easy to be analyzed. 
Okay. So what we do is actually we consider this as the load and then we transform this as a Thevenin circuit. Why? Because uh, this Thevenin, this R1, X1 and XM is, is actually usually fixed values, but uh, the only parameters that change is actually R2 over X here. S, okay, so that's why we consider this circuit as the, the load. So um, we can simply analyze this circuit by converting this uh, stator R1, X1, and XM in the Thevenin circuit. So for the Thevenin circuit, what you need to do is uh, BTH and also ZTH. So R1, X1, and you have this XM. So this one is your V1. So this is your output terminal. So you need to know what is your VTH here. And also from here also you need to get what is your ZTH. Okay. So from the electrical circuit analysis, so you will determine that your VTH is this one. Okay. And uh, your ZTH is uh, have a RTH and Z. JXTH, where RTH is this one. Okay, and your XTH is X1. Okay, so this one, if you look at carefully, um, since R1 is very, very small compared to the combination of X1 and XM, so that's why sometimes this one we can neglect and we obtain uh, the simplified uh, equation like this, okay? Okay, so this value RC, so after we have obtained the equivalent circuit here, so uh, from, uh, we need from, and then we need to know what is the value of RC, XM, R1, X1, X2, and also R2. So to determine these values, what you need to do is to do some tests, okay, to the induction motor. So there are three tests. The first one is the no load test, okay. So this one is uh, simple, it's actually simply like an open circuit test of the transformer. Okay, where it's actually, there is no load connected. Okay, and then the second test is the block rotor test. So block rotor test, meaning that yeah, right now the rotor R2 is actually R2 over S. So when we block the rotor, meaning that your S is equal to one. So meaning that your value R2 is always remain uh, fixed to R2 values. Okay. And then the third is actually just a DC resistance measurement. So this one is just use a multimeter to actually compute. From, from this, we will obtain your R1, which is the R stator. Okay, so actually after you have obtained this value, okay, and then you um, put it inside this equivalent uh, circuit. Okay, equivalent circuit here you will actually uh, can do analysis in terms of maybe you perform a simulation with a different speed and so on, okay? So from that, you can predict the efficiency, the power factors during uh, during exact some, uh, some speed values, what is the current that flow when the speed is uh, around 1,800 and so on, and starting to and so on, okay? So, we can predict this performance. Uh, that is the why we need modeling. Okay, we can predict uh, the performance of the of the induction motor. So uh, for the no load test, okay. Since we have uh, this one is X two and also this one is actually R two over S. Okay. But since there is no load connected, meaning that I2 here is zero. So when I2 here is zero, meaning that the rotor circuit is actually not functioning. So that's why we can ignore this one. Okay, so 
the only circuit that is operated is uh, the stator circuit which consists of uh, R1, X1 and XM. Okay, and from here we can measure the voltage, okay, measure the current and also measure the power from the power meter. Okay, and for the block rotor test, from here we can see that it is actually have XM here and R2 should be R2 over S, okay. But since this is block rotor, meaning that your S is maintained as one, so that's why uh, the rot the value of the R2 is actually uh, fixed, and then XM we uh, compared to R2 XM usually is uh, very very big, so we can consider this one uh, is actually can be ignored. So same, so we use a voltage voltmeter. To, comp to measure the voltage, the current, and also power. Okay, so from that reading, for the no load test, we'll obtain the V no load, I no load, and P no load. Okay, from here we can get the power factors and so on. The same thing with the block rotor test. Okay, so from here, uh, from this test, we will obtain the values of uh, R2. XM and so on. So R1 is actually, uh, which is the R stator, can be uh, can be obtained directly by measuring the uh, DC resistance. Okay. So this example three will be uh, discussed in our class. Okay. So thank you very much. I think that's all uh, for this video. We meet again soon. Thank you very much.